Hi, this is Freddie Spencer coming to you after the last round of the 2018 MotoGP World Championship in Valencia, Spain. Now, this was always going to be an interesting weekend. And actually, I kind of look at it now because of it's the last round and the championships were already decided, that it's that, that race that gives maybe someone the opportunity to get a win in that they wouldn't or hadn't so far, some last chance opportunities if you haven't been on the podium this year to get on the podium, or maybe if you've never been on the podium before, it's a great opportunity in the last round of the championship. And then, of course, you have... What is actually begin will begin the week after the 2019 testing season. So it's it's exciting and and it's a race that I I have been to a couple of times and was down there for the race this year. Now the weather uh, was not that great. In fact, it was warmer and drier when I left London uh, to get get the plane down on on Thursday. But it's always was going to be exciting. And this weekend, uh, it certainly was. Now, we, as most of you know, if you watched it, the weather was atrocious in many ways. There was really no opportunity to get any completely dry practice in. And so that puts a lot of, a lot of pressure on the riders because, and the teams um, in the MotoGP class because they have to take advantage of, of an opportunity if it is a little bit dry, which it was in, in a couple of the sessions, to where they could get down and, and get a pretty decent time in. And, but like I said, because of the threat of rain, you always have to be on top of your game. Now, I've ridden around Valencia a few times. They do a classic event there at the beginning of ever uh, racing season. Uh, at the end of February, 1st of March, a Valencia Classic. And, and I want to tell you something. If you think it looks pretty tight on, on TV, it is tight when you ride around it. And I've ridden a 250 around there, 250 GP bike, and, of course, 500, a three-cylinder 500 a few times. And it's a fun track to ride on. And, and the reason why um, that, that it is, the way it is and shaped, is because of the massive grandstands to get that effect of a stadium. And so it, the track was... Uh, built with that in mind, and I think that it actually does a great job considering the amount of space that they have to work with. And so it's it's one of those tracks that you spend a great deal of time, of course, except on, on the front straightaway, either one side of the tire or the other. And so that really makes it critical in wet conditions that you got to really stay on top of your game. Uh, certainly the crew and, and has to do a good job of setting up the electronics. Um, if you listen to the MotoGP bikes on the front straightaway, um, you really don't even really hear them break traction that often. Uh, the riders would feel it, but, and certainly you, you can hear, but it's, it, it's amazing how proactive the electronics are in that respect. But they still, uh, like I said, have to be really careful, and we saw that in the race, of when they're carrying speed, um, certainly on current, current entry, you're going to have some, some crashes. And like I said, because it is a track that you're either on one side or the other and making the big, you know, in the sweepers, and then because there's not a whole lot of distance between most corners, uh, the straight line is transitions from one side to the other. And so, like I said, it, it really puts a lot of, a lot of stress on the riders to really be on top of the game. And what I mean by that is, is looking ahead, making sure that they're really prepared and they have the right trajectory. Uh, because riding in the rain and carrying speed and trying to take some of the pressure off um, uh, the load uh, is having the right trajectory and, and, really, and also carrying momentum and carrying speed. Going into the weekend, like I said, there was there were certainly a lot of riders that uh, wanted to end the season strong. Of course, Mark wanted to win in front of his home fans. Um, and also the Ducatis want to kind of continue um, what they started this year. I know with Jorge, he certainly wasn't going to be anywhere near 100%. 
but as I said in last show, he certainly wants to, wanted to try to get as many laps as he can before he made the transition. Of course, this week that he would be to HRC as Mark Marquez's teammate, and so there there was going to be that. Uh, I know that the Yamahas um, have really done a great job, and you know it, it's interesting. And, and and they had kind of said in the press that they really struggled in wet conditions um, with the 2000. They certainly did with last year's bike. In, in wet conditions and, and certainly in the conditions as we, as we saw in a couple of sessions where it's wet and dry and just that not one not completely wet, not completely dry, they certainly have struggled in those conditions. But in years past, if and certainly if we go back to 2015, those were the conditions that really propelled uh, Valentino Rossi, uh, Valentino to, to lead the championship because it looked like everything was working in his favors. As we as we know, and and on race days, in those kind of iffy conditions, him and his M1 were basically almost unbeatable. It may not have won the race, but he certainly was right there challenging so many times. And like I said, it's what allowed him to be leading the world championship. So that is something they've struggled with. And and uh, was that going to be better this weekend? Well, it was. Maverick Granales, uh, of course, in, in pretty almost dry conditions, was on the pole and did a great job with that. Um, Dovey was right there on, on the front row. Mark struggled. Uh, he had a crash and a couple of crashes in practice and qualifying. So in, in that shoulder, I watched him, and you could see the pain he was in. And, and I was actually up in, in race control, and we were watching. And, and you could see in one of the crashes, well, it, twice it happened to him. To where the airbag, when his when his airbag inflated, you could it, what it looked like to me is, is that it actually put his shoulder, popped it out, or put it in such such a position that that it was just extremely painful. And then they would he'd go back to the pistol let they're out, and then you know re reset it, and he, he was fine. But he certainly is gonna have to you know after he gets through this week, and and I think they have one more test, and they talk about he's gonna get it fixed in December, and I'm sure he's gonna be happy about that. Because it's it's got to be causing him not only some some pain but just discomfort and maybe not really able to do what he'd like to with the bike uh, because of it and so but the championship is out of the way and now you can get that fixed and and get back going as we as we got into the race because they the weather conditions it certainly looked like that that Sunday was going to be the most uh, the wettest and it was. Um, and they, they started the race. Um, Valentino was back, I believe, in, in 16th position. Uh, Jorge Lorenzo was back at 12th. Um, and at the start, and this is something that, that I, would, I would encourage every rider uh, that has a dream of, of, of racing at any level, um, is to watch how Valentino takes advantage of getting through as many riders as he can in that first lap. It made me actually think of something. When I was a kid, one of my strengths was passing, uh, flat track, is flat track. And, and I had to learn you had, what you had to learn to do because on most Friday nights, we'd race on tracks, all different type dirt surfaces. But the, one that I, the ones I was really good on were the tricky ones. Uh, very narrow grooves, not a whole lot of traction, required a lot of finesse, a lot of throttle control, and the ability to be able to pass in a small area and to be able to make a pass on someone when they least expected it. And, and I could do that first couple laps in a race. Is and maybe I had to, sometimes had to start on the back row if you did, had a jump start, only 12 lap main event, and you had 12 riders and on a little quarter mile. And I could come from the back row and, and a lot of times be in the lead in three or four laps. And I, it was just my ability to be able to kind of see gaps and to be able to take advantage of it when other riders are just trying to get settled in to a, a rhythm. And that's where Valentino is so strong. He passed eight riders the first lap in those conditions. And that first lap, and you probably could see it on the screen. You can't see very well anyway. There were these rain tires, and, and rain tires do such a great job of dissipating in, in the water. Um, but it causes a massive spray. And, and I watched him specifically for that reason. And uh, the camera angles were amazing of, of the range control. And you could see 
just the different ways that that he was he was getting through riders and and uh, hats off, great job, Valentino. And he was up front and what a fourth, fifth, second or third lap and 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 in fact, if if they hadn't stopped, in fact, Maverick Vinales had said that he thought after the race, him and Valentino both thought they could have finished first and second. That was a couple of reasons. One, obviously, Maverick would have had to not crash as he did. But they chose the correct tire. They chose the soft front, and and uh, Renz and Doby were both on the mediums, and that's what was allowing Valentino, especially toward the end of that first segment, before they threw the red flag, because the water built up and they were hydroplaning. You could see that in Bradley Smith's crash. Um, he would have probably, probably won the race. Um, if they would have just continued on with that first one, but as he, as Valentino said afterwards, and I and I respect him and, and commend him for saying it, that even though it cost him, it was this, it was the safest thing and that was done, and and so uh, race direction uh, stopped the race and and did the restart. Um, of course, um, Mark was out. Uh, interesting thing about Bradley Smith, he crashed actually got his bike back to pit road on the service road. Um, he picked the bike up because they threw the red flag that lap that he crashed, and you have five minutes to get back, um, get the bike back, back to pit road. He was technically still in the race, even though he wasn't, wasn't uh, he on the racetrack. He was on the, the road, the circular road, the road that's just on the edge of the track where service vehicles go. Anyway, he got back to pit lane and and uh, got back in in for the restart. So good job, Bradley. Paul Sparga, he definitely benefited from that that red flag because he crashed um, or he struggled in 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 the first part and um, got got for a complete restart and um, was able to take advantage of that and and ended up finishing in third spot. So that was his first um, podium, and as well as KTM's first podium. So it's really a good job for Paul uh, to have the struggles he did in the first in the first leg, and then was able to you know pick the bike up, of course, and continue in the first first part of the of the race. But he was so good ways back, but got there and was and and took advantage of a good good start in the second leg and got up to third place. So it's not many times that you have, in that case, a struggle where you crash, pick the bike up, get back going, and then you think there's, you never imagine that things are gonna happen, but it shows that you can never say never. And the most important thing is, is to hang in there, and that's what he did. And great ride for third place. Um, Valentino, as we were saying, had a great first part of the race, but it looked like that, that um, he was going to maybe get at least second uh, in in the second leg, or what was the restart, the second part of the race. Um, but he he crashed, and that's you know two races where um, out of the last three where he was right there and 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 had two crashes. So certainly his speed is there. It's just he's going to have to have a little bit better luck uh, to get the job done. But what can you say? Great job for Alex Renz. Um, he Looked like he had the race pretty much under control before the red flag and then picked that up in the second part. As I was saying, I think Dovey and Renz both were able to, to go to the soft tire, which helped them in the second leg and um, got, got a great job done and finished second. Like I said, Paul was third, but great job for Dovey. Uh, he just seems to get it done in all conditions. And whether it's dry, iffy conditions, or as it was on Sunday, and in complete wet conditions, and um, I think that is a good sign for him. Of course, he's going to have Daniel uh, Petrucci as his teammate for 2019. They say that uh, their, the 2018 bike uh, was such a, a vast improvement that the 19 bike they just hope to refine a little bit. So that's a great sign, and, and hopefully. You know that'd be good for them, and and they'll be com competitive like they like they were. But you know the MotoGP World Championship, as as the last weekend showed, as as good as it as it gets as far as competitiveness between all the manufacturers, 
And um, with the new influx of, of Moto2 riders for next year, a new Yamaha team, I think it's going to be an exciting championship uh, for 2019. So having said that, I want to say a couple more things. One is, is, is as I said before uh, in the last shows, that I've, I'm now the, going to be, for beginning in 2019, the FIM MotoGP Stewart's Panel Chairman. And because of that, I won't be doing these podcasts anymore. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't ever see me do something, uh, because maybe you're going to do some with Matt. Uh, I know we have one more uh, program we're going to do, kind of our year-end show that we'll be talking. And then next season, do be doing some maybe uh, some special events uh, as the season goes, just um, talks and things with, with Motorsports Magazine. We'll have to see, but... Having said that, I want to say this, that I really have enjoyed these last couple of years doing this with everyone. I hope that the insight has been interesting and maybe give you some information and some a little different way to think about it. Uh, certainly from the rider's perspective and, and my years of, of Grand Prix racing. There's been a lot of comments and, and things and I really appreciate the support and I've really enjoyed it. So if I don't see you again uh, doing these podcasts, hope to see you at a Grand Prix because I'll be there at Qatar next year uh, beginning this, this new journey. I look forward to that and hope maybe I'll see you sometime. Thank you.